see someone wearing this jacket, you should be afraid. We are a force who are not living for ourselves or for now. Hey, Walking Dead fans and Fear the Walking Dead fans. Welcome back to the channel. Another video. This is going to be a review of Fear the Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 5. Spoiler alert if you're not caught up. And overall, this was a good episode. It did reveal a lot of stuff to us about the helicopter group, but it also probably raised just as many questions. This episode of Fear the Walking Dead was directed by Laurie. Sarah Wayne Calise, who played Laurie on The Walking Dead, actually directed this episode. Isn't it crazy how many of the actors are directing episodes? We know that Michael Cudlitz, who played Abraham, has been directing episodes. Andrew Lincoln, who played Rick Grimes, he's going to be directing some episodes. The guy who plays Strand, Coleman Domingo, is directing episodes. Laurie from The Walking Dead. So, and I'm sure that's that list is going to grow. Uh, Morgan... Lenny James, he may end up directing an episode or something. A few of the just simple things we did learn is the helicopter pilot's name, Isabel. I think we learned that there's plenty more of them. I had said in other videos that there was a theory that it could be a small group, but I think we learned it was a pretty large group for sure in this episode. One of those key uh, clues, I think, is the Ground 17 that they were saying on the radio. So Ground 17 is a handle of that chopper and those two pilots. And if the number 17 means there are 16 others and possibly even more beyond 17, this group could be really, really big. You know, Isabel said later on that the it, this is bigger than you and me. That doesn't mean it's a bigger group necessarily. It's just a bigger, like, mission. But the Ground 17 to me is definitely a big clue that this group is, is a big group and there's plenty of choppers out there. It also tells me that this is not the same chopper that picked up Rick. And another clue we have that it's not the same chopper that picked up Rick, uh, the chopper that picked up Rick has an A on the door. And this chopper doesn't have an A or a B. And I was thinking the choppers that possibly have a B on the, their door and picks up B subjects would be different than the A, and they possibly even go to different places, if you know what I mean. If an A is picked up, which we think is a bitten person, Jadis was always going to like have someone be bit, and then the chopper would take it away. So I would theorize that the A's go to one place, and it's probably more of like a lab area, and the B's would go to a different place, the community or a work area. And if you listen to prior videos, you know I don't necessarily think this is the Commonwealth group. I think that could be a different group, and this is a another group. But as big as they're talking it could be, maybe it is a Commonwealth, or the show's version, of course. You've got the uniforms and things like that. They're well supplied. But a little tidbit, I don't know if you noticed or not, which could mean something or could not mean something, is uh, maybe now we know where or why Jadis had that weird haircut. You know, we were all like... When the junkyard scene started happening a few seasons ago in The Walking Dead, a lot of people were like, check out that chick's haircut. You know, why is her haircut that way? Why is she talking that way? And all this kind of stuff. Maybe we will learn a lot of those clues, and some of that may stem from this group. But as far as the group being large, it is well organized. They have protocols. They're well supplied. As we noticed, they had beer and all kinds of supplies sitting up there on the top of that mountain. Although we didn't get a name or location, she said, I'm not going to tell you the name, and I'm not going to tell you where it is. And I'm sure a lot of us fans, when she said that, was like, damn it! But she did say she was collecting supplies for about purifying water, so that's intriguing in itself. And she said it's bigger than you and me and all of us, and it's the only thing that matters. And they were going to send a reclamation team. And that means they're going to claim something back. So, And that team would have came out and either took over the mission or made sure they got all of the supplies that they needed, whatever the first team was after, made sure the helicopter and any cleanup that needed to be done, maybe some people saw them, take those people out, whatever it may need to be, that's probably what this team does. During the rock slide, Isabel did say, we have the future. She didn't say we are the future, one thing that I did get wrong, I did a video earlier, I went ahead and took it down because I was totally wrong about it, but the partner to Isabel, I thought might have died from the radiation, and he was scared that he was going to die from the radiation, 
and he was actually going to go AWOL. And that's why he died. He did not die from the radiation. He died from Isabel shooting him. And why did she shoot him? Because he was going to go AWOL. And she was sticking to protocol. And it does seem we get another clue or proof, I guess, that they're trying to tell us that they are in Texas. When they flew over the mountain, which could have been into New Mexico or Arizona or something, they're still in Texas, possibly around Austin, West Austin, North Austin. Even though the road sign that we saw Alicia beside was East Austin, I think. They did show us this map. She grabbed that map out of that SUV, Texas map. So maybe it's telling us again, hey, we're in Texas. But one thing I wanted to throw out there, if you guys caught it, I think it was a reference. And maybe it's a common thing, but... I know there's a lot of young viewers out there, but Looney Tunes cartoons back in the day had this cartoon, Ralph the w Ralph Wolf and Sam Sheepdog. Morning, Ralph. Morning, Sam. And the wolf in the cartoon would always try to get the sheep, right? But the sheepdog had to protect the sheep, so it would always beat up the wolf and all that kind of stuff. But they would clock in in the morning and then clock out in the evening. And as they were walking to the clock to punch in, they would just be talking like friends and buddies. But once they clocked in, they were enemies. And Isabel said, the sun comes up. We punch in and shit gets real again. Yep, so when the morning comes, we punch in and the shit gets real again. So when the morning comes, we punch in, we're back to work. We're back being enemies, really. So in the end, Isabel releases Al. They go their separate ways. Al's reunited with Morgan and Alicia, and the helicopter takes off. But really, the biggest thing in all of this that we learned, or raised so many questions for me anyway, was the bog tape. Number seven, maybe, is what it had on it. So the bog. And we learned about Al, and she chased the story and lost her brother and didn't get to say goodbye. He died and that's a conflict within her. As with the conflict with Isabel as far as killing her friend over protocol. Instead of siding with her friend and saying screw protocol. But as Isabel did watch the tape, we learned about the army moving down one side of the street and the National Guard the other and shooting at each other. So we don't know all the circumstances at all with this. Were they really shooting at each other? Were citizens shooting back at the Army and National Guard and the National Guard and Army shooting at the citizens? Could there have been just thousands of dead all mixed in there? She was definitely protecting that tape, had it hidden in the bottom of her bag. She was definitely protecting that tape for some reason. I think something in that tape may tell us a lot about what happened in the beginning, or at least with the military, which is a big interest to so many people out there as far as the fans. But since this video is getting long, I'm going to break that down in another video, so look for that coming very soon. Al did end up giving the tape to Isabel, so I don't know. Isabel may be, or turn out to be, because she had to shoot her partner over protocol, because she met Al and ha has feelings for her, and because of the tape, it looks like Isabel may be a defining character. She's going to end up going against the system. She may play a big part in the Rick movies as far as getting him out. We, we just don't know. She may be a big player because of what happened in Fear. So these things in Fear, her partner dying, meeting Al, and getting the bog tape, Maybe the catalyst, maybe the the seed or something, you know, to finally make Isabel be the one that kind of breaks shit open or allows someone in or gets out and, and tells the world about this group or whatever it may be. And just a little joke here at the end, she may be the one that wakes Rick up from his coma. But there's definitely just a whole lot to unpack. Like I said, I'm going to do another video on the Army National Guard thing. It'll talk more about this episode a little bit and other details throughout sh the show and stuff. So definitely look forward to it. More videos coming on the channel. Stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't. As always, thanks for watching. 
and come on and hang out anytime for more dead stuff. Nice day, huh, Sam? Yep, good to be alive, Ralph.